Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to solve the problem number 1.76 from Erodo and that is related to dynamics. So let us first understand the problem and then we will solve the problem step by step. In the arrangement shown in figure 1.19, the mass of body 1 is eta times as great as that of body 2. So this is the arrangement we have in which this is the body 1 and this is body 2 and it is given that the mass of body 1 let's call it as m1 that is equal to 4 times mass of body 2. So this is given and it is also said that the height h is equal to 20 centimeter. So right now the body 1 is kept at 20 centimeter height from the ground and the masses of the pulleys so these are the pulleys the masses of these pulleys and the threads are negligible and there is no friction between the pulleys and this thread and it is asked that what is the maximum height that two will go up to okay what is the maximum height that two will go up to when the body two is released okay so for that case we have to determine that when the body 1 is going in the downward direction by a distance of x1 then what is the distance by which the body 2 will move in the upward direction okay so for that we have to first write the constraint equation constraint equation and what is the constraint equation that is for the entire system summation of work done by all the internal forces that is equal to zero now we have two bodies here which are having the masses that is body one and body two and in the body one this particular thread is kept here and let us assume that the tension force on this thread is t1 okay and let us assume that the tension force on this particular thread is T2 and this particular tension force will act at every point of this thread because there is no friction between the pulleys and this particular thread okay so on the body 1 we are having the tension force of T1 and the body 1 is moving in the downward direction with the displacement of let us say X1 and body 2 the t2 force is acting on the body 2 and the body 2 is moving in the upward direction with the displacement of let us say x2 what is the work done work done is basically force vector dot product of displacement vector okay here if you see the force that is t1 is opposite to the displacement so we can write the work done by tension force of T1 on body M1 is minus T1 into X1 because both tension force and displacement are in the opposite direction. Plus the work done by this particular tension on body 2 is T2 into X2 because both are in the same direction so I have kept it here positive that is equal to 0 so we will have t1 x1 is equal to t2 into x2 so this is the equation we are having we want to get the relation between x1 and x2 but here tension force is also there so we have to uh, determine the relation between t1 and t2 for that let us draw the free body diagram of this pulley let's call it as pulley 1 and let's call it as pulley 2 so if we draw the free body diagram of pulley 1 then this is pulley 1 this is pulley 1 in the downward direction we are having the tension force of t1 and if we look at here there are two parts of this thread so and on the entire thread the tension force is t2 so from both the direction we will have the tension force of t2 okay 
so the mass of this pulley is negligible so we can directly balance the forces here that is 2t2 is equal to t1 so this is the expression we are having if we substitute this particular equation here we will get 2t2 into x1 is equal to t2 into x2 okay so t2 t2 will get cancelled we will have x2 is equal to 2x1 that means the if the body 1 is moved by a distance of x1 then the body 2 will move by the distance of 2 times of x1 okay so if this particular body is moving by the distance of 20 centimeter then this body will move by the distance of 40 centimeter okay but this is not the end of the game because when it reached the body 2 is reached at this point this particular body will stick to the ground then it will have the velocity it will have the velocity in the upward direction and when it has the velocity and it has the body 1 is reached to the ground then the tension force will become zero okay in that case at that scenario the body 2 have the velocity of v1 in the upward direction and there will not be any tension force between the body and the thread so we will have only one force that is the gravitational force m2g so we will have m2g is equal to m2 into a so acceleration after this point is g okay so after this point the body 2 will have the acceleration of g in the downward direction but in order to determine this particular velocity we need to determine the acceleration before this particular point so for that we have to obtain the free body diagram of body 2 and body 1 before this particular point so let's say before this particular point we will have the gravitational force of m2g in the downward direction and in the upward direction we, we, we are having the tension force of T2 and it is going in the upward direction with the acceleration of A2. So we can write T2 minus M2G is equal to M2 into A2. Similarly, if we draw the free body diagram of mass M1, so we will have the gravitational force of M1G in the downward direction, tension force of T1 in the upward direction and this body is moving in the downward direction with the acceleration of a1 so we can write m1g minus t1 is equal to m1 into a1 okay and we know the relation between t1 and t2 so let us substitute it here so we will get m1g minus 2t2 is equal to m1 into a1 to determine the relation between a1 and a2 we have to look at here so this is the relation between the displacement of body 1 and body 2. If we differentiate once, we will get dx2 upon d2 is equal to 2 times dx1 upon dt. Okay. If we differentiate it again, we will get d square x2 upon dt square is equal to 2 times d square x1 upon dt square. So this d square x2 upon dt square is basically acceleration of body 2 is equal to 2 times acceleration of body 1 so we also have the relation between the accelerations of body 1 and body 2 and we need to determine the velocity of body 2 so we will keep the a2 in the expression and we will write it as a2 is equal to a2 by 2 okay and let us substitute it here we will get m1g minus t1 is equal to or better we can write for this one that is m1g minus 2t2 is equal to mass in m1 into a1 is a2 by 2 so we have 2 times m1g minus 4 times t2 is equal to m1 into a2 so we have this particular equation let's call it as 1 and this particular equation let's call it as 2 so from these two equations we can have t2 minus m2g is equal to m2 into a2 and 2 times m1g minus 4t2 
is equal to m1 into a2 and we know m1 is equal to 4 m2 so this expression we can write 8 m2 g minus 4 t2 is equal to 4 m2 into a2 so let's solve these two equations so we can have t2 minus m2 g is equal to m2 into a2 and the bottom equation is 8 times m2 g minus 4 times t2 is equal to 4 times m2 into a2 let's multiply this equation by 4 so we will get 4 times t2 minus 4 times m2 g is equal to 4 times m2 into a2 so this two will get cancelled and we have 4 m2 g is equal to 8 m2 into a2 so m2 m2 will get cancelled and we will have a2 is equal to g by 2 so this is the acceleration we have before this particular point before this particular point so if we have this particular equation so basically when it it is in the ground then it has the zero velocity velocity is equal to zero and when it is reached at this 40 centimeter point 40 centimeter then it is having the velocity of v so we can write from the equation of motion that is v square is equal to u square plus 2as initial velocity is zero so final velocity v square is equal to 2 times acceleration is g by 2 into 40 centimeter we can write 40 upon 100 meter and here we can take g is equal to 10 meter per second square so we we, we have v square is equal to 2 times 10 by 2 into 40 by 100 okay so we will have v square is equal to 4 okay now after this particular point we are having the velocity of 4 meter per second meter square per second square that is sorry we will have the v square of is equal to 4 meter square per second square and we have the acceleration of g so we can write and the final velocity till this point it is going to the maximum height here we have the velocity is equal to 0 so initial velocity is 2 meter per second final velocity is 0 so we can again write final velocity v square is equal to u square plus 2 as and the final velocity is 0 and u square is 4 that is equal to 2 into g into s so from here we can say s is equal to 2 upon 10 that is 0 0.2 meter and 20 centimeter so basically it has already moved by the distance of 40 centimeter and it will again move by the distance of 20 centimeter because of the velocity so total total distance it will move that is equal to 40 centimeter plus 20 centimeter is equal to 60 centimeter okay i hope the entire problem is clear thank you